this is about chronontology, which is a, a scarcity of temporal terms, roughly speaking. And because it's a quite theoretical thing, not entirely, because then I wouldn't have been allowed in, uh, but still quite technical or theoretical, it's mainly monochrome with a hint of blue. Um, oh, goodness. Uh, is there a page down thing? Okay. Yes. Okay, so let's start with the most difficult slide. What is actually a period? So uh, most of you will know CDOC CIM, or at least I hope they have a vague idea what it is. And um, so there are classes in uh, CDOC CIM, and one is period. And it says it's a set uh, 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 of coherent phenomena. So you make a boundary about some phenomena that you want to bundle. And it says that this is the main point about periods. It's not the spatial temporal extent, which we may know or we may not know, or people might disagree on. Um, it's the point what we want to bundle. That is the point. And uh, the definition goes on for seven more paragraphs. I think this is the record in the CRM um, for good reason. And then there is the practice, which is periodo, which is a list of, of terms from different sources and uh, with start times and end times. And um, you have the Getty AAT with all the temporal terms. And of course, uh, we have Arachna ourselves, uh, where we also have a list of terms which have no associated conceptual information. They are just there. And this is actually a feature in Arachna and not a bug. However, in chronontology, we do it differently. Um, uh, yes, so princip in principle, a gazetteer for temporal terms is the same as a gazetteer for place names. Um, it's norm data, you can link to it. And it is concerned with terms like Middle Augustine or also early first century AD. Um, it's more like a service, this first century AD, because uh, it's, it's not really a temporal term, but Middle Augustine definitely is. So, and there is a small mock-up of our service. It actually is online, but it is not fully functional yet. It will be within um, April. So, if you check again in a month, the data should be in there. Um, so, we have a rather ambitious goal, which is actually to take all terms that we are interested in mainly. So, we are uh, interested in archaeology and classics, but we might broaden it uh, from other information systems and from the literature. Um, yeah, this is an ambitious goal, and uh, the project runs for three years, but it is part of the DAI infrastructure. So there is a certain uh, a certain uh, there is a guarantee actually that it will continue after the project is finished. And so it's part of a common infrastructure. We have also a gazetteer of course. Um, this infrastructure, this is very important, is open for other people as well, uh, either for using IDs to, to link to it, but also for inputting data. Um, these services are quite tightly integrated, and of course it's linked open data. Probably I wouldn't also be allowed in here if it was not. Um, and, oh, front ends, which should be front ends. So we also have a standardized technical part in the DAI where we have similar back ends and similar front ends. Of course, there are some variations uh, because you cannot do the same thing for everything. 
So you may know Arachna, of course, which has been rebranded iDi Objects. Uh, you may know the Gazetteer. Um, and we have other services like a vocabulary uh, and um, dictionary. And so, now another theory part comes. I think the gazetteer, um, or the, the temporal term gazetteer needs more theory because with the gazetteer you can have a very important question, where is my place, or this is what people want to know, I was told. Um, and in a temporal gazetteer you might not even have this information. So we follow the theory of a paper in Dor et al. Uh, from t 10 years ago. Um, theory has not progressed much since then. What has progressed is that they have an example of 10 terms and we will have a few thousands and probably more terms. And as I have said already, the important thing is that terms are not defined by their temporal extent. People might disagree about it. They have a definition um, and an ID and uh, I will come back to the definition later. And they have an associated space-time volume, so they might wobble uh, through time and space. Uh, the same term might be happening at different times, at different places. Bronze Age in the Levant and in Europe, for example. So we want to make explicit what information is there. We have a standard bottom-up approach that is common for the CDOC CRM that we look at examples and try to model them. Um, and there might be a chance that we will actually merge it with the gazetteer at some point. It's not clear yet. So, but we also have the problem that we need to ingest other systems and we need to ex uh, ingest them quickly and we cannot think about every term very long. So we also have a system where we can ingest things and describe the information that is given, even though it might not be part of the ideal temporal term thesaurus that we are um, trying to approach. But we can describe them and we can then slowly make it more precise if we have um, the manpower for that. Very important is that the statements that we make are not wrong, at least not wrong. They might be not very helpful because the information given in the original is not very helpful if you try to understand what it actually means. Um, but this is somehow the trade-off of uh, we want to have a very nice system, but we need to get the data in. So we have a few fields that describe the internal information of the data set. Of course, the idea we have uh, the idea we have names in different languages. We have types, uh, which is actually then the part of the thesaurus, and the rest seems to be more like a classification system uh, for people who are interested in the difference. And so, of course, we can have the same type uh, term like Augustine as in a political sense, but we can have it also in a material culture sense. The curly thingies on his head might <coughs> wobble in one direction or in the other direction. And if people don't give this information of the type, then we also have something that is just all meanings. We have provenance of data, and well, Getty is actually the short-term provenance, but of course Getty has it from somewhere, so we also have the original definition, if we do have the information, and a few other standard fields, and of course dating information and space-time volume information. So as I said, this is, oh, there's a third color, I'm sorry. Um, this is an, a graphic where you can see that, for example, Bronze Age happens at different times in different places. Uh, it's quite an obvious thing for anyone who is interested in archaeology. So, and then we have connections between different data sets. So we have 
relationships that are there because of the definition, like Middle Augustine is per definition part of Augustine. We have things that are just more or less by chance connected. We have, even though we always talk about space time volumes, we have temporal restrictions, we have spatial restrictions, we might have both, both. And we also have sense restrictions, like, as I said, all meanings might be restricted to Augustine in the sense of all possible meanings might be restricted to Augustine in the political sense. Uh, we can have different kinds of matching, how terms are, might be the same or nearly the same. And since we already have a gazetteer, and the gazetteer is a more common concept, we also have different properties that link to it. So, for example, lies in is obvious, but core area, sometimes the information is given that something happens basically there, but it might also happen in the area around. Or the Neanderthal is named after Neanderthal near Düsseldorf. But it's, it might not be the main point where the Neanderthal um, occurs nowadays. Yes, and then there are a few difficult things like here that you have very, very fine-grained um, periods and uh, different kinds of transitions between them which sometimes are unclear or it goes from there to there uh, clearly or not clearly and we also need to describe this and for this you have the standard Allen relations which I think can be described like this so we have one interval here one interval there and they might be next to each other not related they might touch each other they might overlap or they might have any of these relations so but as we have seen the transitions might be fuzzy so let's call this a wobble so I have an interval here and I have a wobble here and a wobble there and then the question is how do the wobbles relate the wobbles might not touch the wobbles might wobble together or the wobble might be safely in the non-wobbly part of the other interval and uh, again this wobbly thing is somehow um, related uh, to the Allen relations in the sense that if for example the wobbles overlap and you have more information then you can at some point say okay I have a very clear uh, way from one period to the other and then I come back to this yes I don't have to describe it in wobbly terms I can say this is really touching this one and then I'm back with the Allen relations so this is again this workflow from being unprecise to being more precise and of course it's very important that if the wobble happens here or here in time doesn't matter for the relationship itself so even though I don't have uh, precise time. Just a key. So, and then in the abstract we wrote about two use cases, which is the possibilities of querying different heterogeneous data resources and so on, and the po potential and problems of reasoning, and this is a story for another time. And we also think about the visualization and here for example you see how the, the spatial and temporal the spatial um, extent of the objects that have been connected with a specific term and uh, we are still in the phase of trying to find out what we can do with it of course we will have some standard visualization like like the time interval. I think people just expect this, that most people, just as with gazetteers, will just say, well, I don't care about the theory. I will just, I just want to have times and I want them on, an inter on a timeline. So, and 
we will also offer a service where we have this early first century idea that is also mapped to a timeline and also terms like Augustine keeping in mind that what exactly the, the boundaries of this uh, term uh, might be disputed so there might be different mappings to the timeline and we might also offer a service of calendar conversions if there is a need for it if, if men, uh, enough people say yes we want that that uh, for example Egyptian calendars can be mapped to the Western calendar. There are systems, we cannot invent them, but we might offer a unified wrapper for them. And I think that's it. Thank you.